case. Oh, you know about that? Did you hear that on the other class, this one, or did you? Uh... Yeah. Okay, anyways. Um, so today we're going to take a look at um, doing exponential equations, and there's one skill we have to get uh, to before we can start it. So uh, can anyone tell me how I could write 64 as a number, so like 4 to the exponent something equals 64? Yeah, so 4 cubed equals 64. So another way I could rewrite this would be 4 cubed. Okay, what about um, 81? Can somebody write that as in base 3? Yeah, 3 to the 4th. And finally, how about 625 in base 5? Yeah, so that'll be to the 4 as well. So 5 to the 4th. So the reason we need to be able to do this is we're going to have to um, change some of our equations around, like these ones here. So let's try it with an x as well. I'm going to walk you through the first one just so you see how it goes. Um, first of all, we're going to do is we're going to ignore this 2x here. We're going to pretend it's not there because we don't need to worry about it just yet. We just want to think how can we write 9 in base 3. So that one, even I know it's the end of the day and the sun is shining, but I'm sure you can come up with that. How would I write 9 in base 3? Three yeah, 3 squared. Okay, but I'm going to go like this and keep the x around. So hopefully at this point you would agree with me that those two things are equal. That 3 squared is 9, so this would be the same thing, 9 to the 2x. Does anybody remember the exponent law that we have to use here in order to reduce this one more time? Add times, yeah, so you might be a little fuzzy. It may have been since grade 10 when you had to do this. Um, the exponent law here, when you're raising it to an exponent to another exponent, is to multiply. So this would be 3 to the 4x. Now, um, I'm going to let you see if you can work out how would you write 125 to the 2 minus x in base 5. See if you can do that on your own. Okay, so... Um, what did you come up with? How did you replace 125 and 5? Yeah, 5 cubed. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 cubed to the 2 minus x. And be careful, um, you're multiplying, so the whole thing needs to be multiplied. So it'll be 6 minus 3x as the exponent this time. Okay. Um, there's a few more exponent laws that are going to pop up. For example, in this one, if I want to convert this to base 2, um, I'm going to do it to both these pieces. So 8, um, I can write that as 2 cubed. So it'll be 2 cubed. And 16, I can write that as 2 to the 4th to x. And exponents come first. So the first thing I'm going to do here before I deal with that multiplication is the exponent means uh, instead of 2 to the 4 to the x, I now have 2 to the 4x. Okay. And then I can add these together. Okay. Um, what about for the next one here when there's a fraction like 1 over 512? First of all, I'll, I'll, make, I'll, take, I'll do one part of this for you. Um, 2 to the 9 is 512. It's the ninth exponent. But how That's how do we get from 2 to 1 over 512? Oh, good. So you remember that rule. Um, what I'm going to do is I could do this a couple ways. That would be like writing this as 2 to the 9th to the 3x. And then I could make it negative, and that will bring it up to the top. So 1 over 2 to the 27x, and that's to the negative 27x. Okay? And again, when you do your exponent laws, you can you know, change the order around. You have a little bit of freedom in the steps that you choose, but at the end, as long as you follow the same rules, we'll have the same answer. Um, so for this case, you have 2 to the negative 27x. So I'm going to have you try this one with the fraction, see if you remember how the exponent laws work for fractions as well. So did anybody manage to figure out how to change 2 thirds into 16 over 81? How so? Alan, you want to take a stab at that? You got, I didn't realize you were sitting beside each other. No, Al, yeah, that's great. Alan, you can... I thought 
I'll be more specific. Alan C. Then I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're on the right track. So let me just finish off here. For those of you who kind of forgot the way this works. Um, Sixteen is two to the four, and eighty-one is two to or is three to the four. And then the exponent law that you can do is if you have the same exponent on the top and the bottom, you can then remove from the whole fraction, and uh, it would look like this. So if I wanted to finish converting this, it would be two thirds to the four x plus twenty. you the reason we need to figure this out. Um, the rest of the questions we're going to try and tackle here are to solve some equations. So here's a really, uh, it sounds more complicated than it is. The words make it sound complicated, but I'll show you an example real quickly. But if you have two bases that are the same, so same base, and they're equal, the only way those things can be equal then is if the exponents are also equal. Okay. So let me show you just a, a preview here. Okay, this one's real simple. You can probably do this in your head. Maybe I'll move it up a little in case you can't see it. Let me go back. Um, this, this equation here, same bases. The only way you're going to get the same number out is if you have the same exponents as well. So you can probably solve this one in your head. But um, the idea then is to say, okay, if the bases are the same, and these two numbers are the same, then 2 must be equal to x plus 1. The exponents must be the same. So then if we wanted to solve this, right, you get x equals 1. And I, I realize that you could probably do that one in your head, but that's the process that we're going to follow. So if we want to put it simply, if there's only two powers, it doesn't work if we add something extra, like if there was a plus 1 over here. It wouldn't work anymore. But if there's just the two powers, so a number raised to an exponent, they have the same base, then the exponents must also be equal. Whoopsie, exponents. take a look. I'm going to do the first one here and then I'm going to have you guys work on the next few. But sometimes these equations are camouflaged. They're not exactly the same. So we have to figure out how can we make the bases the same. So we've already done this a little bit. For example, I could turn 9 into 3 squared to the x minus 2. And then it will give me an equation that looks like this. 3 squared is 3 to the 2x minus 4. So 2 must be equal to 2x minus 4. And 6 equals the 2x. So x must be equal to 3 in this equation here. So that's about the only curveball that you're going to see in an exponential equation. The ones that we do anyways are going to be um, that maybe they're camouflaged. The bases are, you are able to rewrite it with the same base, but it may be camouflaged. You have to figure out how to uh, unwrap it. Okay, so I'll let you work on the first three and we'll recap them together. Okay, so the first one is pretty straightforward. The bases are already the same. So 2x equals 4, x should be equal to 2. So hopefully there's no problems in the first example. The second one we have to do a little bit of work. 7 to the x minus 2. 343 is 7 cubed, so now I have the same bases. That way I can rewrite my equation, which is that should be a 2. So this would be x equals the 5. Okay. And uh, the last one, this is 3 to the 4x minus 1. 3 to the 4x minus 1. And 
27 is 3 cubed. So that'll give me 3 to the 4x minus 1 is 3 to the 6x. So 4x minus 1 must be equal to 6x. If I try and rearrange this, I'll be, uh, let's see here, negative 2x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 half. So how many people are three for three right now? That was easy, kid stuff. Excellent, good. Okay, so um, the next one's fairly similar. Um, you'll have to change some bases. Does anybody remember, how would you describe the square root as an exponent? Do you remember that? Yeah, that's the exponent one half. So for example, square root three might have forgotten that little tidbit, but square root, that's the same as the exponent one half. So I'll let you take a look and see how you do with those next three, and we'll recap together. All right, so I'm going to catch up. I know some of you are already through these. If not, you can uh, double check your work. You probably want to double check my work. Sometimes I've been known to make the odd mistake. So I am going to end up with time of minus 2 equals to 6x, so negative 3x equals to 2, so x will be equal to negative 2 thirds. And in the second one, so 81 is 3 to the 4th, so this will be 3 to the 5x minus 1 equals 3 to the 12x, 5x minus 1 should be equal to 12x, so then um, negative 7x equals 1, and x is negative 1 over 7. And then in the last one, um, the only tricky part in the last one there is re recognizing that that exponent square root is the same as 1 half. So if I rewrite this, in base 3, now everybody's related, but I have more than just two uh, powers. There's actually three powers in this equation. So before I drop them, I should combine those. So that's uh, x is 3 and a half. How many people are still three for three on the, uh, good, okay.